Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A few of you have asked me about uh, vocal health or vocal fatigue. Like, what happens when you know? How can you how can you prevent your voice from getting tired out or feeling pain uh, in the voice when reciting and things of that sort? One sister told me that her Quran teacher, uh, just by reciting a lot, teaching a lot, reciting, reciting, like she actually lost her voice. Uh, another uh, brother told me that he's trying to mimic, you know, Sheikh Al Afasi, and when he, you know, so he listens and tries to repeat, but just after a short while, like he starts to feel pain in his throat, right? So I just want to talk about that, the the, the issue of vocal fatigue or vocal pain. First of all, if it's pain, if it's like, you know, you're losing your voice and you're feeling a lot of pain or something like, and it reaches the point of a medical issue, then obviously don't come to me. Go to a doctor that specializes in uh, the throat or voice and can help you with that, right? So now, when we think about when we think about reciting, right, uh, and vocal pain that might come from that, there's there's two things. Either you're reciting properly, right? In which case, if somebody's reciting properly, without tension, at ease, but they're doing a lot of it, then eventually they might feel some tiredness or or uh, not really pain, but they will feel some fatigue in their voice, and that's natural. That's natural. So that's to be expected, right? That's kind of like if you're doing anything, I mean, your body gets tired just by doing regular stuff for a full day, then you need to sleep, right? Sometimes your voice needs a rest, right? You're either talking a lot or reciting a lot, uh, you know, or your, your whole body is just tired. You need to give it a rest, go to sleep, wake up, your, your voice will feel fresh uh, again. Now, when, when, when people come to me and ask me about, you know, their voice is hurting because they're trying to recite like this or like that, most of the time, those sorts of problems come from bad technique, right? And this goes back to some of the other videos we have, whether it's on nasality or projecting the voice or breathing from the stomach and things of that sort. Because what happens is that, uh, is that sometimes when a person is not following proper technique, then they're putting extra tension or extra pressure, or there's a bunch of things that go wrong. One is tension, right? So suppose I'm speaking now, like, you know, suppose I'm making a sound, uh, and the air is just flowing from the mouth, right? No tension. Now, if somebody goes, ah, just myself doing that, I can feel in my throat, there's constriction, there's tension, right? So if somebody's squeezing, there's tension in the voice, there's strain, the person's not relaxed, then doing that, you know, for a while, even 20 minutes, even like 10 minutes, you're gonna feel some sort of pain, some sort of uh, discomfort. So that's one thing, that's tension. Uh, and now regarding breathing, so breathing from the stomach, breathing in from the nose through the stomach. Now if a person breathes, that, that's what we described previously, you breathe through the nose, fill the lower part of the lungs, and project the voice out. If a person now starts breathing from their mouth, they're going to dry out that area of the throat around the vocal cords, right? They're going to dry out just the whole throat area and so on, it's going to get dry from the air. When you breathe from the nose, the air is getting moisturized, filtered, all sorts of stuff. Now you breathe through the mouth, improper technique, and your voice is a lot drier, right? When you recite, recite 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you start to add that up on a dry throat and it starts to hurt, right? So uh, so that's just an example. When it comes to like, we spoke about nasality or the idea of projecting, these things are all connected. So if you're projecting your voice properly, if it's coming flowing easily through your mouth and out, then you're not gonna get that much tension you know, but if you're reciting in a way where it's resonating in the wrong way, you're getting a lot of sound bouncing around at the back, you're putting strain on certain parts at the back of your throat, then again, by using that or, you know, even 20 minutes, half an hour, you're going to feel that tension, you're going to feel that strain, uh, you know, being exacerbated, right? Another thing that you can do to prevent vocal strain, vocal ten, not vocal strain, uh, vocal fatigue and vocal pain is to drink a lot of water, right? The thing with drinking water is that people think, okay, I'm going to sit down to recite, I'm going to have a glass and we drink some water and then recite. Now that helps with one thing, right? When we speak about pain or fatigue, there's two things going on. There's the level of the vocal cords, which is inside, you know, your actual uh, larynx, inside the larynx. And then there's the areas of articulation, which are beyond that, the back of the throat and, you know, the whole mouth. If you drink a glass of water, you're going to moisturize the back of your throat but that water is gonna go down into your stomach. It's not gonna go flush over your, your vocal cords and into your lungs. That would, be, that would be problematic, right? So that water you drink will help 
to lubricate or moisturize the back of your throat, but it won't help your vocal cords at that very moment. When we speak about you know the vocal cords needing to be lubricated and moisturized, that just comes from general hydration. You know, not the water you drink right when you're going to recite, but the water that you're drinking con continuously throughout the day. If you're drinking a lot of coffee, uh, you know, draining yourself of the water, then uh, you know your vocal cords will be dry. They will be less hydrated. And if you overuse it in that condition, it could get uh, inflamed or something worse uh, if you're doing it a lot. Uh, so I think I think that's all for now. That you know, and the last thing actually is that if you start to feel some fatigue, take some rest. Right, take some rest. There was a point I think it was in uh, last Ramadan when I was reciting a lot. I was teaching. I was leading tarawih. Like everything put together, I was starting to feel that strain in my throat. And what I did, I took off the backups to recite, uh, to lead Tarawi that day for me. I took a break from leading, and for that full day, and then the next day as well, I didn't speak at all. I didn't speak. I whispered when necessary. I, you know, scribbled stuff down when necessary. But I refrained from using my voice because I felt that pain at the level of my vocal cords, right? A day, two days, no speaking, and alhamdulillah, everything was back to normal. Everything was fine. So sometimes, you know, that's really what it is. Just a matter of relaxing, taking rest, giving your voice a break. And as a general thing, as a general thing for, you know, this is advice for everyone, but, you know, especially for people who want to recite beautifully the Qur'an, speak less, recite more. Speak less, recite more. Give yourself a break on the, on the speaking, especially idle chatter, and reserve your voice, save your voice for reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, hope that helps. And again, if it reaches the point of like some sort of inflammation in the throat or the vocal cords or like real pain, go see a doctor. Go see a doctor. Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.